Hi, this is Margot. This is Sunday evening, April the 10th, 2022. I hope everyone is safe and doing as well as possible. We made it through another week. Um, I know my voice sounds kind of rough, but I'm actually feeling better and um, I'm getting some things done here around my apartment, digging into decluttering and organizing and you know, it's just something I put off for a long time, but um, I am feeling better and able to, you know, dig into some of this stuff. So, um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the show tonight and welcome my new s subscribers. I uh, finally made it up over 2,600 subscribers, so I hope you enjoy it here and um, made it through another week so we're gonna look at methane and CIs and usual stuff I'm gonna start off with an article from National Snow and Ice Data Center they posted this this week on April the 5th spring in fits and starts and I'll leave a link below so you can read this if you want to but it's a real good overview of the Arctic and Antarctic of what's gone on in the last couple of months and I'll just go over a little bit after reaching its seasonal maximum extent of 14.88 million square kilometers or 5.75 million square miles on February 25th. The seasonal decline in Arctic sea ice extent through March proceeded in fits and starts. By the end of the month, extent saw little change, ending up at 14.5 million square kilometers or 5.6 million square miles the middle of March saw excitement with several extreme warm events over the Arctic Ocean associated with large transports of water vapor into the region. The Antarctic region also experienced unusual warmth and breakup of a small ice shelf. And we covered that breakup of the ice shelf last week. So, um, here they go into overview of conditions, you know, what's been going on. Um, here's um, a chart with conditions and context. And that's kind of small, but um, <coughs> the graph shows Arctic sea ice extent as of April 4th, 2022, along with daily ice extent data for four previous years and the record low year. 2021 to 2022 is shown in blue. I mean, you really gotta uh, like blow this up to really see it. <coughs> and because it's kind of small. But, um, Anyway, you can you can look at that if you want. <clears throat> and remember, extent is just the amount of area that's covered with ice. They don't talk about um, thickness or volume. It's just extent, and it can just be a little wispy, you know, like pond scum, and they count that. And um, so, anyway, and here's March 2022 compared to previous years. And we're on a downward line, as you can see from that graph. And here they go over extreme events. And um, let's see what else. Here's the Antarctic. <clears throat> the 
they found they found a ship as mentioned in last month's post the wreck of the endurance was found on the floor of the Weddell sea the endurance became trapped in the ice on january the 18th 1915 at 76.57 degrees south latitude and 328.5 degrees east longitude it drifted with the ice over the ensuing months until the ice closed in and began crushing the ship in october the crew abandoned ship on october 27 1915 and the endurance finally sank on november 21st 1915 the crew camped and drifted with the ice until the ice began to break up. They launched lifeboats on April 9, 1916. Fortunately, they were close enough to row to the small, uninhabited Elephant Island that at least provided some shelter. Expedition leader Ernest Shackleton and five others then sailed by lifeboat to South Georgia Island, several, several hundred miles away. After landing, they had to cross by foot over a mountain chain before finally reaching a whaling station. They were eventually able to secure a rescue ship to the rest of the crew on Elephant Island. All crew members were saved. Wow, what an adventure that would have been, huh? <clears throat> it had to be hardy, hardy to go through explorations like that. And then they do an overview of the uh, warming event that happened in March, and it coincided with the time that that conger ice shelf broke up. Here's the atmospheric river event where the rain came so close and there's a uh, there's the ice shelf that broke up conquer ice shelf we went over that last time so that's all right here it's all right here in one long post to have an overview of everything so I think that's a good thing to have now uh, We'll move on to methane. I have two days worth of NOAA data to go over first. We're looking at the 8th, which was Friday. This is for the 477-469 millibar reading for the MET-OP-B or MET-OP-1 satellite in the morning. The mean or average was 1923 parts per billion. So we can see that that has really jumped up. And the high reading was 2476. And look how far south we're seeing pinks. Anything in the pink range, which is between 2000 and whatever is the high reading here. And see how far south it's coming. In the afternoon, the mean was 1920. And the high reading was 2416. And then on yesterday, the ninth, the mean in the morning was 1921. The high reading was 2410. And in the afternoon, the mean was 1917. So that went down. And the high reading was 2361. Here's my spreadsheet and chart for us to look at this. And <clears throat> it averages out on the night uh, to be 1919 parts per billion, giving us an overall increase this week of 0.5 parts per billion. The same increase as what we saw last week. And so here the line is just went up a tiny bit and I am going to break this out into separate years just because it's getting so jumbled um, 
and we're 12.5 parts per billion higher than a year ago, 49.5 parts per billion higher than where I started tracking this on March the 4th of March the 1st of 2019. But you can see it's an upward trend and we're heading into the warming season now and so methane will be going on the rise. Uh, the sharpest rises usually start around in June, June, July until around October. That's the big warming season for methane. <clears throat> so let's see what happened this week. Here we were in our show last week. We ended up at 1918.5 parts per billion. And then on the third, no change. On the fourth, it went down 1.5. On the 5th, no change. On the 6th, it went up 2 parts per billion. On the 7th, it went up another 3 parts per billion. So 2 days in a row, so 5 parts per billion increase in 2 days there. And on the 7th, we were 17.5 parts per billion higher than a year ago. And then on the 8th, it went down half a part per billion and then on the ninth it went down 2.5 and giving us an overall increase of only 0.5 parts per billion this week and 12.5 higher than a year ago. So we're in no man's land and we're setting records all the time. You can see that because like this time Last year, um, it was way down here, and see we're way up here, and we never go back down as low as where it was before, so we're on a uh, uh, general upward trend, and like I said, we're setting records um, every single day. So, you want to remember that. Okay, now we'll move on to the CAMS part of the show. This is from Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Services out of the EU. I have Saturday the 9th, Arctic view, and surface level ready to go. Here's our color ledger. So the data is for Saturday, and the forecast period runs Sunday through Wednesday. <clears throat> so we're seeing all these lower colors, lower readings over the Arctic than where it was just a couple of months ago. And here it comes some mullets where it had been billowing <coughs> for two years now that's that's just magically fixed itself <coughs> okay I had to pause it I had a coughing and sneezing fit there <coughs> anyway I was saying that combs and mullets magically fixed itself with the <clears throat> that high methane that had been releasing for two years. So what we want to watch are <clears throat> these yellows and orange colors. We can see um, here it's streaming up from Russia into the Kara Sea and the Barents Sea and higher readings here in Russia. <clears throat> And we've got yellows, yellow, um, <coughs> yellow tinged readings here, <coughs> and that is the um, this light 
chartreuse is 2,000 parts per billion. <clears throat> and then this next yellow is 2,020. It goes up by 20, in 20 parts per billion increments. <clears throat> as it moves on up into orange and red and then this last one is 2160 to 10,000 parts per billion so it's a range <coughs> that's a large range here's our problem spot um, in the North Atlantic that's popping up again <coughs> That's typical as uh, we move into spring and summer. It's typical to see that. <coughs> see this area in North Dakota. There's a lignite coal mine there. And that's coming from that. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about my voice. I really can't help it. Um, Koktovic still billowing and uh, it's popping up here in southern Alaska. Um, this will, as it warms up, <coughs> there will be a lot of methane coming up in Alaska. <coughs> <coughs> they have uh, thawing permafrost and I've seen uh, quite a few quite a few videos recently about the permafrost thawing and the problems with it and <clears throat> it's very it's ser very serious because if you have an infrastructure that was built on permafrost thinking that it would be permanently frozen and then all of a sudden the ground starts sinking and you start having methane blowouts or slumps <coughs> or the land just starts flowing you know you got problems you lose the whole infrastructure with pipelines and sewers and you know, buildings will be falling down. It could interfere with roads. Everything. Everything. And they're already seeing problems in Alaska and Russia uh, from, from the thawing permafrost. <coughs> so, then you got the permafrost um, in the sediments in the ocean. So it's all over the place. <clears throat> so um, here in North America, see so just depending on the day, you'll have blobs of the higher, higher readings like here in Texas, and then here the Ohio River Valley, and then here on the East Coast and then California has blobs. <clears throat> it's kind of a constant. And look at um, like the UK down into Germany and parts of France. And here's the Persian Gulf. Here's India. <clears throat> it's lighter today. See, it's not as filled up. Same thing with China. It's not just uh, a total blob. I mean, we can see lighter readings coming through. go down to the Antarctic <coughs> 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 so
So here's the Western Peninsula. This is South America here. And see so we've got high readings uh, down here in Chile. And see how it's streaming off of South America and coming across. And see it's popping up. <clears throat> I mean it's worse here in the Antarctic. <clears throat> all around this western peninsula these Larsen ice shelves um, and down here look all around the co this coastline and the Brunt ice shelf here's the north side Avery ice shelf <coughs> and look right here it's going to pop up see independently over the land see as a higher reading so right now so we're not seeing any of these navy blue the navy blue color which was 1800 parts per billion the main background color in the southern hemisphere is 1820 which is what we're seeing over most of this area and then as you see the more uh, solid aquas that's going up like 1840, 1860 then it moves into the greens so that's not looking good Now we'll go to the global view. <clears throat> it's kind of jerky the first time through, even though I loaded it up just got to reload it so we're seeing this um, these higher readings uh, drift down further into the southern hemisphere see um, we've got higher readings over a lot of Australia now moving into 1840 the 1840 range and see it's just drifting and see here in the Pacific and you can see the demarcation between the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere with the green as the main color main background color for the northern hemisphere and then the blue for the southern hemisphere <coughs> And South America's filled up, see, all the way across. <clears throat> now we'll look at 500 HPA, and this is about the same level as what I'm tracking on NOAA about halfway up in the atmosphere <coughs> we can see it lightening up a tiny bit over the Arctic regions so it's not just that solid dark red but um, it's redistributing and you can see these oranges and reds coming further south It looks so angry, doesn't it? Just angry. And now total column. This is where methane is added up through all the layers of the atmosphere. Look how high it is over the Arctic. 
and then um, here it's China and Southern Asia high readings <coughs> 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 Now I want to go through um, this, some more images here from CAMS. This is sulfur dioxide today. We've got a high reading <clears throat> here in Peru. That's probably volcanic. And um, it's been coming up <clears throat> for the last few days here over the Arctic. I don't know why. Here it is at 500 HPA, where it just shoots up into the atmosphere. <coughs> Here's the Arctic view. So it's been coming up here. Um, there haven't been earthquakes that I know of up here, so I'm not sure what's causing this release. And See, it's hanging around at 500 HPA. So it could be plate movement. The tectonic plates, when they move, a lot of times they'll re release sulfur dioxide. This is ozone over the Antarctic. We can see the hole forming, and it's gone down into the aqua <clears throat> see right over the south pole and then we've got this break on the western peninsula and see we've got aqua here in the south pacific and here um, in the indian ocean and then green see this break <clears throat> this goes up towards africa Here's the Arctic ozone, pretty heavy, coming across. And then here's the global view. It looks so bad. <clears throat> Look at the southern hemisphere. It's just, we're losing the ozone layer. You can see <clears throat> from month to month how much thinner this is getting. Huge areas in that blue-green. And here's Aqua over Indonesia. Or Papua New Guinea. That's terrible. That's all of those. <clears throat> now we'll go through Climate Reanalyzer. We'll start off with 2 meter temperature anomaly. We've got some reds here in Russia next to the Kara Sea and browns here in the Bering Strait. Reds and browns over Canada and then over part of the US. Here's the flat view and we can see the Antarctic has got some reds down here um, next to uh, reds and browns over the Ross ice shelf and then just spread out <coughs> worldwide we're up 0.6 C higher than normal the northern hemisphere and the Antarctic are both up 0.9 C the Arctic is down 0.4 C, Southern Hemisphere is up 0.2 C, and the Tropics are up 0.4 C. So there's that. Here's precipitation and clouds. And see this rain coming up to Iceland, and rain here off the coast of Norway. Here's that. And here's what's what used to be the jet stream. And um, 
it's just huge waviness now as it's breaking down as everything is collapsing same thing in the southern hemisphere and see all the breaks causing weather chaos <coughs> with cold air right next to warm air and sea ice and snow cover for today and we can see it's retreating here along the Canada coastline and a little bit around Greenland <coughs> uh, we're not seeing a lot of difference yet so um, um, as as we progress in the melt season then I'll show the daily daily images of these on my Sunday report here's sea surface temperature anomaly as of yesterday still had browns here in the Barents Sea and around Svalbard and Iceland brown around Iceland here it's um, turning uh, almost into the reds around Greenland and then off this uh, North America coast it's this is like a constant problem area I don't know if it's from all the pollution coming off of North America or why why it's always in in the high readings there I just don't know. <coughs> Here's the flat view. Look, um, look at this brown coming in in the Arabian Sea and up into the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea. We're also having browns now come in in the Mediterranean little bit of brown in the Caspian Sea and here in the Baltic Sea <coughs> and we're getting a few more reds here around Japan it's kind of always red and brown but it looks more dense today and see brown around Kamchatka <coughs> and brown around Australia brown and red reddish around New Zealand then we've got some reds here south of Africa and then <coughs> uh oh what I do off the um, coast of South America too look look at all that here's uh, coming across the Pacific <coughs> anyway not good that's just not good okay let's go over these numbers worldwide we're up 0.3 C higher than normal along with the southern hemisphere up 0.3 C northern hemisphere North Atlantic and North Pacific are up 0.4 C and the equatorial Pacific is down 0.2 C Alright, <clears throat> now we'll move into the sea ice portion of the show. I'm going to start off with the images from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. They posted this today. This was from yesterday. Sea ice concentration in the Arctic. The golden line is the median, so see we're underneath that. <coughs> <coughs> and the blues are where it's thinner and not as packed together, not as concentrated. Look at the blue here in the kerosene. and here's the chart for sea ice extent as of yesterday this blue line is this year the dotted line is 2012 we kind of flatlined here 
<clears throat> so we're still below 2012 and the median there. Here's the Antarctic and see the golden line is the median so we're quite a bit below that and here's the chart of the regrowth this blue line is this year the greenish line is last year so we're running kind of parallel now with last year it's, um, it's still lower though but it's it's refreezing a little bit. <coughs> now we'll go over the U.S. Navy models. This is uh, sea ice thickness in the Arctic for today. We can see that most of the sea ice is in some shade of aqua, which is about two to two and a half meters thick. The green is three meters thick, and the red, the dark red, is about five meters thick. So we don't have very much thick ice at all. <clears throat> and I've named these quadrants one, two, three, and four, just for reference. Here in quadrant two, um, where the Atlantic is coming in, you know, this is going to be melting first, it looks like. It's <clears throat> got some pretty thin areas there. And here's Greenland. Here's the Baffin Bay. So this is a combo of aqua moving into blue and purple is still um, really thin and looks like a hole here next to Greenland and here's the Hudson Bay with aqua on the east and uh, purple on the west and all these tributaries now are in some shade of aqua and here's the Beaufort Sea, um, shades of aqua mainly, a little bit of greens coming in. <clears throat> and here's where it had pulled away from the coast of Alaska and did a little refreeze. Here's the Bering Strait with um, some thicker ice um, as it bottlenecks at the Bering Strait and then thins out. <clears throat> Here's the Sea of Okost around Russia. Pretty thin. Got a little bit of aqua. A couple of spots. And then in, <clears throat> in this quadrant one, shades of aqua mainly. And then here's the Laptev Sea that's pretty thin right around the coast. <clears throat> and and then here's the kerosene where it comes up here's the 30 day animation this was updated to yesterday so the data goes back three weeks and the forecast goes out to Saturday next Saturday <coughs> you can see the movement of the eyes watch it sliding see it's sliding to the east at the end there Let's see so it's pulling away from the coastline Then down here around Alaska, it's going to pull away again. <clears throat> it 
So it's just kind of in a holding pattern, not really thickening that much. Just holding before the big melt starts to happen. It's cracking open. You'll see when we look at NASA Worldview, uh, big cracks opening up. And here's the Beaufort sea ice thickness. And here's this. Well, that's what we have of the thickest ice, five meters. Not much. Just not much at all. And here's where it's pulled away from the Canada coastline. <clears throat> and here's Alaska down here. We've got a little hint of red along the coastline. And the 30-day animation. This was updated to today. So the forecast period goes out to next Sunday. Watch here. See it pulls away some more at the end. That's the ice drift. Um, th the ice is in constant motion. It's dynamic. There's that. And here's the Antarctic for today. So we can see regrowth happening here in the Ross Sea. And around this western side. Um, not much on this western peninsula. Um, on this west side. Here's the Weddell Sea. So, the majority of our thickest ice is right in here in the Weddell Sea. Into the aquas. And see, it's just uh, slightly refreezing around the rest of the coast. Here's the 30 day animation updated to yesterday. So again, this forecast period goes out to next Saturday. <clears throat> it's a slow refreeze what we're seeing and that's all of those now we'll move on over to NASA Worldview and here we're looking down on the Arctic uh, we can see the Sun is completely up and it's still in an angle so um, it's not full force of the sun yet, but um, you'll see it's melting. Now, here's <coughs> here's the sea ice concentration model or layer. See these pinks? That's where it's starting to come apart. We never had just solid white all the way across um, this year, which would have been good concentration. So that means that um, there's lots of breaks in the ice and it's thin, thinner where you see any colors. <coughs> Let's see what it's done this week. We'll go back to our show last week on the 3rd. So here we go. There's Monday, 
Tuesday. Well, wow, big change there. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, <coughs> Saturday, and today. So we'll turn this layer off. And now we'll just go through the satellite view. Starting on Greenland. This is an unbelievably good image here today with very few clouds. You hardly ever see see it in this much clarity. So here's uh, where the ice has broken up around this northwest coast of Greenland. And here's the nearest strait. See where the ice is breaking up. You can see a lot of open water already. And this never completely refroze this winter. <coughs> see the pieces of ice. See that. See the open water. <coughs> See. Here's the Lincoln Sea. So, see the these are blocks of thicker ice and then this is uh, thin ice in between. And then here's Greenland. Here's the coastline. See these <coughs> these leads? These long cracks, they're called leads. Those open up first. Now we're into some clouds here. Here's the east side. Here's Svalbard. See, it's clear on this southern and western side. <coughs> Here's this, here's this east side of the sea ice. Here's Franz Josef Land. And see there's op some open water there. Then coming on over, here's Novaya Zemlya. <clears throat> Just a fringe of ice on this west side. Here's the Kara Sea. There's the Yamal Peninsula. And <clears throat> here's the ice around the coastline. Let's see where it's. That's open water there. And then coming on up. Here's the ice. See, that's breaking up. See, look at that. Here's Severnaya Zemlya. Here's Kumpsa Mollets. And it's right around here where we saw the methane billowing on cams for two years and now it's magically disappeared. It's fixed itself. There's open water. That's melting. And then coming on around. <clears throat> this is the Laptev Sea. Look at these cracks. Uh-oh. Here we go. See? 
these leads opening up. See that? Long cracks. That's what happens first when the ice starts to break apart and melt. <coughs> Here's the Laptev Sea. We've got a cloud over it today. Let's look at yesterday. That might be a little better. Eh. <clears throat> no, it's got some clouds every day. But, um, see there's a little ice shelf right around the coast. And then here's where the sea ice comes up to it. This is where it had pulled away from the ice shelf and then refroze. So there's open water and see this is thin ice here. <coughs> Here's New Siberian Islands. See that's cracking up. See that? This is the East Siberian Sea. Here's Wrangell Island. Here's the Bering Strait. Let's look at this. See, there's the ice. So, open water in between there. Oops. My mouse. It gets, it gets a mind of its own. <coughs> and then Alaska here's where it's pulled away look at that here's Barrow <coughs> see these cracks look at this this is the Beaufort Sea see cracking Look at that. And here's Canada. This is where it's pulled away from the coastline. So right along here is where you have the thickest ice. Five meters. Five meters thick. Not much. <coughs> Let's see the it's opening up and here's Ellesmere Island can't really see much there and there's the North Pole can't see much there so there's the Arctic now we'll hop down to the Antarctic briefly. <coughs> so here's our model showing where the sun is, um, where it's dark as the sun is sinking towards the horizon. But I want to go to or was it yesterday? <coughs> Maybe it was the day before. Alright, down here I want to show the Pine Island Glacier and the Thwaites Glacier. <coughs> um, here it was on the 4th. This was the day after our show last week. And um, you can see, here's the Thwaites Glacier. Here's 
where it's refrozen and see all the knobby things that's the texture of the ice and here's the tongue where it's refrozen and there's Pine Island Glacier here got clouds over it but again these these are pieces large pieces that had capped off and that got frozen in the sea ice <coughs> So clouds, clouds since the fourth. <clears throat> now, let's move on up. Here's the western peninsula. So we're seeing methane come up all along these Larsen ice shelves. I wanted to show the iceberg we've been tracking. This guy, A76. He broke off <clears throat> last year. There he is. He's still in the ice. Still pretty much intact. This is on the 7th. But he broke off right here on this ice shelf. You can see the hole. And so he's been making his way through the eyes of the Weddell Sea and got some momentum and so I'm watching to see when it's going to go you know out into the ocean I think it's going to freeze in for the winter can't really see it there too many clouds um, it's right there see the line <coughs> And this is today. Here's the Weddell Sea. And here's the Brunt Ice Shelf. Here. And it's been cloudy all week. <coughs> Can't really see it. So this is another area that we see methane coming up all, all along here. And here's the northern end. Here's some refreeze on the ice, see? And with the sun being at an angle and with this model, you have some unusual colors, like uh, you see the browns and the blues. Um, normally you don't see that. Here's some ice refreeze. Then on the east side, here's the Amory Ice Shelf under a cloud. And there's the ice refreeze. Here it was on the 8th. There's a cloud. There's the ice free coming back up <clears throat> and then coming on around that Conger Glacier or ice, uh, yeah the glacier was right here the ice shelf <coughs> that broke off but it's refrozen it kinda it really got decimated in March but here we can see it's refreezing there's the seventh here it was on the ninth. See, 
See the refreeze? And today we can't see anything too cloudy. And here's the Toten Glacier. See the weird colors? And this is a good view. See the crack on this tongue? It's still hanging on. Here's the ice refreezing. There's the glacier. Let's see? So there's that refreeze. <coughs> And around this southern end and the Ross the Ross Sea is right here. Here's the Ross Ice Shelf. It's in the dark now. Let's see. The model is weird, but um that ice shelf it is in the dark now. And McMurdo Station is in the dark now. So there's that. Now, we'll look at some earthquakes from this week. Right now, there are 185 worldwide. <coughs> look at a lot of fours, and we've got some larger fives. And um, But look at all the movement on the plate lines. See here, South South Sandwich Islands, here in the Atlantic, here um, uh, in between Australia and the Antarctic. Look at that. So we've got plate movement. That's a 5.1. <coughs> when you see them on all those big red lines. You know, you got plate movement. I wanted to look at, <coughs> we've had uh, quite a bit of activity on this Juan de Fuca plate this week. Um, let's turn on um, all magnitudes for the last week. <coughs> 1,856 earthquakes this last week. Here was a 6.3 at Vanuatu. That happened yesterday. I wanted to show this Wanda Fuca plate. Look at this. <coughs> busy, busy, busy. And See, even at the fulcrum point, lots of earthquakes there. At Petrolia, California, and then <coughs> here on the plate, and there was a 4.4 and 4.1 both yesterday. So, um, this is the Cascadia subduction zone here. So as this plate moves, as we see movement there, um, it's an indication that it's subducting more. One, uh, you know, one is going under the other. <coughs> so when the collapse happens, we'll have big problems. There's Texas, and so on. <coughs> There's Alaska. Look, look at these Kuril Islands. They were busy. Japan. Um, yeah, most of these were in the water. A couple were on land. <coughs> <coughs> so, look at this here in Greece, Turkey, 
and um, where is this Kosovo and here's one Bulgaria normally we don't see them there and here's one in Poland 4.7 on the 7th near Pokowicz <coughs> normally we don't see them there either the extra movement look at this four point four Canigo Portugal this is near the Canary Islands they're right here <coughs> not too far see from the Canary Islands So, I'm just amazed we're still here, frankly, with all of this. So, we'll finish up by bringing our attention back to the spiritual. Because, you know, how can you talk about the end without talking about spiritual things? <coughs> So we continue to read out of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Who is the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment and the in regard of the oath of God. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery of man is great upon him. For he knoweth not that which shall be, for who can tell him when it shall be? There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. All this have I seen, and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And so I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the place of the holy, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil an hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men, unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again, there be wicked men, to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. 
I said this also was vanity. Then I commended mirth, because a man hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry. For that shall abide with him of his labor the days of his life, which God giveth him under the sun. When I applied mine own mine heart to know wisdom, and to see the business that is done upon the earth, for also there is that neither day nor night seeth sleep with his eyes. Then I beheld all the work of God, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, further, though a wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 So we're in um, different seasons of our lives, and but we are close to the end. And so I recommend you get your spiritual house in order and get ready to exit the planet. I think that's really the most important thing that anyone can do. Get your house in order. And if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, I highly recommend it. So, I hope everyone has a good week. I love you all and I'm praying for you. So until next time, God bless you. Go in peace. And I will talk to you soon. Good night.